Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Fire! Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue, and welcome to the game day edition of the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. With us today is the angel of the big house, Michigan beat writer Angelique Shengelis from the Detroit News. Before we hear from her, let's get it going as we always do with my view from Section 17. We did what we needed to do on Saturday against Maryland. That set the stage for the biggest matchup in this series since 2016, down in Columbus, when everything was on the line. We lost 30-27 to in overtime. We all remember it well. No need to rehash it. In August, I did not think we would be in this position on Thanksgiving weekend. I'm certain most of you didn't either. Uh, this team has exceeded all of our expectations up to this point. They are mentally tough, they're balanced, and they play great complementary football. They are a very good football team with a 10-1 and record, no question. As Jim Harbaugh said at his presser on Monday, his players understand what this game means and they have been preparing all year for this game. It is an opportunity we have not experienced very often in the last 20 years. Now, not many of the experts think we have a chance this Saturday, the so-called experts, I should say. Ohio State is a very good football team. Some may say great. Uh, They are an offensive juggernaut. There is no question. We have to play our best game of the year and get off to a fast start. It can be done. I really believe it can be done. That is, after all, why we play the game. I know we're ready. You know we're ready. We just have to go out there on Saturday and say, you know what? Enough is enough. It's our day. It's our house, and we want this game. My guest today says she thinks Michigan has a chance to win this game. She thinks Ohio State has some holes on defense we can exploit. She also thinks Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo will be key factors. And if they can get to C.J. Stroud, this game will be up for grabs. Joining me next is the angel of the big house, Michigan beat writer Angelique Shengelis from the Detroit News. So stay with us. on our game day segment as we get ready for the game again. Beat writer Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News. Welcome back, Angelique. This feels like a tradition like Thanksgiving, Mike. You and I talking the week of the Michigan-Michigan. Oh my gosh, 
wait, let's delete that. The Michigan Ohio State game. Ah, so yes. We were talking about Michigan Michigan State earlier, <laughs> and uh, I misspoke. But yeah, no, I mean, it's this is. I feel like I, my week is not complete unless we speak. I mentioned to you uh, last week when uh, we were corresponding that uh, we were 1-11 in 11 or something like that since we started uh, taping during the game week, but my math was a little bit off. I thought about, it. oh, wait, we didn't play Ohio State last year. <laughs> so our, our, we're, we're actually uh, a little better than I thought. I think it's 1-10. in 10. So we, <laughs> this year it, it means something. It is going to be incredible Saturday in the big house. Looking back on last Saturday, Michigan had to take care of business to get to this point. And, you know, a little bit of a sluggish start against Maryland, but they got it going and looked really good, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, it did. It took them a couple a couple series. That they The first, what, two of the first three, they went yeah. three and out. But they did sandwiched in between was a was a touchdown to Schoonmaker. And, and, yes, they did. They got it going in every phase. And, and I thought that was an encouraging sign uh, going into this week that that they really were clicking. It, it felt I know you know that's the one thing that a lot of of uh, college football analysts, television analysts uh, that I've watched have said that they think that this is a very complete team that Michigan's very complete. And and I thought that that's what they that's how I would describe their play on on Saturday at Maryland is it's just complete. They they scored in every phase and they just looked um, you know it, Maryland's not a very good team. But they they looked they did the job they were supposed to against a team like that, and I think that's also been consistent this year. Michigan's beaten up on teams that they were supposed to beat up on. I guess you could say, well, Rutgers, you know, whatever. There there were some of those slips, but yeah, I, I thought that was a, that was a really nice win for them going into this game. And I I didn't think that they would be a trap game. This team has been very focused, Mike, week to week, and. Um, you know, they hit the reset button after the Michigan State loss, and, and they called it a four-game season, and then it was a three-game season, and now it's a one-game season. Just a last takeaway from the uh, the Maryland game. Really, the last couple of weeks, Angelique, you know, we've been talking about the lack of production uh, in the red zone. That's really picked up in the last two weeks. They're really starting to get seven instead of settle for three. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, I, I've been harping on that week after week, and then all of a sudden, it, when, they, uh, when they start scoring touchdowns in the red zone, I stop talking about it. So, I made a point today to to mention that, like you know, you, you always want to pick out the negative, pick on the negative, mm-hmm. and then you forget to say, well, they've done it, you know, pat on the back, and and they had six red zone trips and they scored five touchdowns. Again, it was against Maryland, but you know, if they hadn't done that against Maryland, then there would be a lot of criticism. So they did it, you know, they scored in different ways, and and obviously Donovan Edwards was was a key to this to this performance, but they you know they had they had. I thought Cade McNamara played really well. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that they got a really great game out of him. And J.J. McCarthy looked like maybe the, his best game he's had when he's got he went into that game. And um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're creeping up the national list. They were 84th, and now they're 81st in in touchdown percentage in the red zone. And, and but that you're right. The last two weeks, they've definitely that's something they focused on. And uh, and and they definitely have uh, have looked way better in that in that area. I watched that Ohio State and Michigan State game uh, on Saturday, Angelique, and man, they took uh, the Spartans to the woodshed. It was impressive. <laughs> Have you ever seen a better Ohio State offense in all of your years covering this? Well, I mean, this is this is a good one. It's 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 you know lightning quick, and they score so fast too. Not not just the athletes are fast, but they score so fast and. Um, and they just have so many targets. I mean, Stroud, you know, he just can you know, pick his poison. And, uh, yeah, there have been some really good Ohio State teams I've covered, but this one just uh, feels more uh, automatic and, and, and efficient. And, you know, there's just – I think Ryan Day took what Urban Meyer left him and has created something even more interesting on offense. And I watched that game, too, on Saturday. I was trying to work a little bit, and – so I'd work and look at the TV, and they'd score again. I'd, I'd go back to work a little bit, and I'd look, and they'd score again. And it was just like, wow, this is like a pinball machine. And I'm pretty sure they could have they could have really piled on the points in the second half and, and chose not to, and which is probably the smart thing, get guys rested. 
but um, yeah, this is this is going to be a challenge for Michigan. There's no doubt. I mean, and, and that's not it's not breaking news. Everybody knows that about the the number one ranked offense in the country. But I think Ryan Day just I, I I've always thought he was an, uh, a really excellent coach, and and I think that he's made people forget about Urban Meyer in, in Columbus. I really do think that. And Mike McDonald will earn his pay this week. Um, <laughs> we're not going to stop this Ohio State offense. I mean, that's a given. But Michigan has got to find some ways, you know, to be disruptive and get pressure on Stroud for just for starters, Angelique. Well, and, and that's that's a strength, right, for Michigan. You've got Aiden Hutchinson who is who is so motivated for this game. I mean this is this is the game that he he has circled personally. He wants this win. Everybody talks about his you know, his dad, Chris and and everything he achieved and being an all American, being the defensive lineman of the year in the Big Ten, these are all things on, on Aiden's list. But right up there is, is a win over Ohio State. So you know he's, his motor is going to be going nuts. It always is. And then you've got David Ojabo. So I think that they've got the bookends that, that can be disruptive. I mean, will they? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 but I think that there's a good chance. And, you know, I don't think C.J. Stroud has faced that, that duo like that. That's definitely not a duo. And I'm not sure they face that much pressure like Aiden and, and Ojabo can provide. So, that to me is is absolutely a key, and and then you have all the other pieces in the defense. I, I mean, the secondary. I think we keep saying we, every week, well, they haven't been that tested. They haven't been that tested, but they are getting tested. And and the one guy I had thought in the preseason who was going to emerge is DJ Turner, and and then he has the pick six last week, and I thought, mm-hmm, see, I thought I thought he'd be a good one. So, you know, we'll see. But it does start up front, and uh, and I think that that plays into Michigan's strength, but. You know, that's not taking anything away from Ohio State because everybody knows how damaging they can be and how quickly they can be damaging. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of fans since the Maryland game, and, you know, some of them say, hey, we have to make Ohio State one-dimensional. And that just stops me in my tracks because uh, you can do that to some teams, maybe a lot of teams uh, with a good defense, but this is an offense with a quarterback that's thrown for almost 3,500 yards, a bazillion touchdowns, and they have an incredible running back over a thousand yeah. yards. You have to pick your poison when you're playing Ohio State, but I think it, it all comes down to you don't scheme anything really special for this game. You just have to take it to another limit, don't you, and try to stop them. You do, and and I think that's where you know we talked so much in the earlier in the season about Mike McDonald and and keeping guys fresh in the rotation, and, and maybe it's been a less a little bit less so um, later in the season, but you know a lot of guys have gotten reps in game reps and and that's going to be important is is you're going to have your key guys out there no doubt i mean aiden hutchinson's always out there um maybe you get ojabo in there you work him in a little bit more um but you know these guys have been fresh is that going to be enough i mean you can't have the mishap like you had in communication like you had at at michigan state i think they fixed that after after that game so you you just there the room for error on both sides for michigan is it's slim to none. And, you know, do they have to play a perfect game? Pretty close. And, you know, we talked, and I know, you know, I'm not trying to switch gears to offense yet, but, you know, we talked about that um, before we started this podcast, Mike. They, they, Michigan has to start fast. They cannot, teams cannot get behind quickly against Ohio State, or it's just going to end very badly. And we saw that on Saturday. So, they, Michigan has to be perfect on both sides of the ball, and let's not forget special teams because I think they've that's been a difference maker for Michigan this year, and and I think that that could be a difference uh, on Saturday to keep them in the game. Absolutely, and you've got to think if the defense can hold up uh, the first couple of series against Ohio State, that will be mentally a real boost for them. But yeah, we we, we did talk about this before the podcast, and I I'm just going to harp on it all week. Those first two possessions, Michigan has got. To not only eat some clock, I think, to uh, let Ohio State see that, hey, this offense is pretty darn good and they can run the football, they can mix it up, but you've got to get points on the board and not three. Absolutely. I, I mean, and, and that was that was the thing that, you know, people like me were criticizing is you go to Nebraska, you go to Michigan State, you get in the red zone and you come away with three points and you leave so many points on the board and, and I uh, on, the, on the field, pardon me, and, you know, I thought that was one thing that I thought was interesting that Kay McNamara said after the Maryland game is that, you know, after every game he feels like, yeah, there's there's plays I want back. And But as the weeks have gone on, he feels that less and less. 
so he feels like he's being more efficient. He feels like he's directing the offense and getting those touchdowns that they've needed. And, you know, they needed a Nebraska game, that they needed a Michigan State. And he feels like he is he is definitely turn that gear, turn on that switch, whatever cliche you want to use, that, that gets them those touchdowns. And he's feeling more confident. And I think that's very important going into this game. You know, a guy who's never played in the Michigan-Ohio State game, uh, your quarterback to have the confidence that Cade McNamara has right now is is huge. And, you know, you can't play the compare game. I'm sure he can't in his mind. You know, a lot of players like to say, oh, I want to see what this running back does. You know, I'm a running back for this team. He can't compare himself to C.J. Stroud because they, they run a completely different offense with different weapons. But he's feeling very good in his own skin, and, and I think that's, that's a very, very – big positive for Michigan and another big positive would be if he could have some early success and get on a roll Mm -hmm. in the first few series in that game because uh, if he can do that that can change everything it can and you know they I uh, there was a a stat uh, during the Maryland game that Michigan is is second behind Georgia in uh, minutes trailing in 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 totality this season it's like 40 minutes and you know, that's not very much. And then they have played ahead. They have they've had the lead. And and when they've trailed briefly, you know, Nebraska and, and Penn State, they've been able to turn it around and win those games. Um, but those teams give you that luxury and that, that ability. Ohio State's not going to. So you need to start fast, get a lead, keep it close for sure if if you are down down by three, not not fourteen, because I don't think this team is that equipped I don't think we've really seen if this team is equipped to come back from a from a deep hole. And, you know, that was one thing that we saw a lot of last year. They get down fast and then, gosh, they just didn't have it. They could not come back. And, and I'm not sure how this team is because it hasn't been tested greatly in that sense. But, um, but I don't think they want to be tested against Ohio State on that. So they need to get those points. They need to get them early. They need to get those touchdowns, not points. They need to get those. I know Jake Moody wants to uh, – He's always envisioned winning the Ohio State game on a field goal. Uh, but I think Michigan probably would rather have touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think all of our hearts would uh, not want it to come down to a field goal either, but especially with the history in that game of uh, Michigan field goal kicking. But this week, uh, do you think we'll see more of Donovan Edwards incorporated into the game plan? I think so. I, I my, my hunch is that Blake Corum will be ready, too. I mean, he was on the sideline in Maryland. I didn't think he was going to play. I mean, he was going home to Baltimore, and um, and it was fun to watch him on the sideline just stay active and get the fans going and, you know, he'd sort of run down the sideline throwing his hands up and, and doing the same for his teammates during the game. So I, I think you'll see Blake Corum again. You've got his son Haskins who, um, I, you know, he's not – unsung because people talk about talk about him so much but he really his work what he does on the field just never ceases to impress me um just how strong he is how he just keeps going keeps those legs going uh but they've missed Blake Corum too they miss that change up and and what he brings but then you get you get Donovan Edwards and what he did in the you know catching the ball out of the backfield and his speed I'm just like wow I mean this kid is as good as advertised and, you know, for Harbaugh, to, you know, Harbaugh isn't one to make comparisons or, or hype a player too much. I mean, he'll say, oh, I love so-and-so, but he doesn't say this kid's going to be fantastic. And then he says after the Maryland game that, this, that Donovan Edwards is destined for greatness. And, and that sure looked like it. Again, it was, it's, the sample size was Maryland, but he still did it. And he did it with, uh, with some real athleticism that was impressive. So, I have a feeling you see all three of them on Saturday. I think so, too, and it gives Ohio State something else to worry about, and that's uh, the best exactly. thing. Exactly. And speaking of something else to worry about, J.J. McCarthy, who, uh, you know, he did look good on Saturday. He did give them that, that wrinkle that they need that Cade can't provide. So they do have to prepare. And, you know, we've talked so much about the, the great Ohio State offense, and the defense was not so great early in the season. It definitely has improved, the Ohio State defense, but it's you know it it has its it has its holes and and i think that's something that uh that's that's something important to consider uh when we talk about michigan's offense is that they'll have a chance against this ohio state defense i think they will too and you just mentioned jj mccarthy i thought saturday was uh, his best game he always looks confident but he made good decisions and you know showed us exactly what kind of talent the guy has uh, with his arm and his feet 
Do you really think we might see him Saturday? I do. Yeah, I mean, I know I know uh, we only saw Cade against uh, Penn State and, you know, that was I thought that was the right decision. It, I actually started thinking back to the uh, Tom Brady Drew Henson time and and how Tom Brady took over that last third of the season and, and started and played those games, but um, but yeah, I, I do. I, I think that, that JJ McCarthy deserves a chance. I, I know that you know he had some issues with the Michigan State game, but I don't think that's a reason not to play him in this game. That that game was on the road. Um, he sometimes does freshman things as you as you would expect, but I do think he gives them something different. Um, you know, especially in the red zone too. I think he's just he's a weapon that they can use. And it's something else for Ohio State to think about. Well, I haven't seen the odds yet. I know they're out. I, I usually don't pay any attention to them, not mm-hmm. even not even for this game. But I think it's safe to say uh, there aren't many people in the college football world that are giving Michigan much of a chance, are they? No, they're not. And, you know, I, I think that um, – I think I, I, my gut feeling is Michigan is going to give Ohio State a, a, a very, very good effort. And we'll keep it closer than people think. I think that the early um, the early line is, is a, I think Ohio State's an, a touchdown or so favorite. I think that's fair. And I, I bet you it grows. I, I don't follow it that much either, Mike. I, I you know I just don't. But um, but I think that's probably what will happen. And uh, but yeah, I think most people think Ohio State's just this offensive juggernaut, which which it is. Mm-hmm. And and that will be enough to overcome a team that's very balanced and. I, you know, I, 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 that's why I think Michigan has a chance because they they have been balanced, and they they've really they did flex all those muscles on Saturday against Maryland, and I think that 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 gives Ohio State something to think about as well. That they, I, I mean, they they can't overlook the special teams aspect of it. They really can't, and they gave they gave um, them a little bit more to think about with that Barrett play and the AJ heading. You know, those, those are all little things that. Uh, here, here's something else for you to think about. Here, put this on your plate this week as you prepare. <laughs> so, um, I like that. I thought that was that was brilliant. That was very. Uh, I thought that was very strategic. I know Ohio State Ryan Day was saying after the game he keeps a book on Michigan. He keeps adding to the book, and he's going to have have to add a few uh, more notes this week because of uh, some of the wrinkles, uh, X factors like Donovan Edwards and what we did on special teams. So, you know, one thing we know though. With this game, Angelique, the game, it brings out the best usually in each team. And Michigan's going to have to make some big plays on both sides of the ball just to have a chance, aren't they? They really are. And and that's why I think of, of, of an Aiden Hutchinson making some big plays. I mean, he, he wants to tie or beat his dad's sack record. So he wants to get in there. He wants to, he wants to meet C.J. Stroud a couple times and not be friendly in, during those meetings. So you know he's got some personal stats he wants to achieve, and and then you've got the, you know the guys on uh, Kate McNamara absolutely wants to wants to have a big game. He doesn't talk about that. That's one thing I also like about him. He's very workmanlike, businesslike, and um, it's not about him having gaudy stats. But I, you know I, I think who did we see at Michigan State? Andre Anthony. I mean maybe this this guy he's got tremendous hands. Maybe he has a big game. But somebody is going to have to, or several people will have to have big games. And, um, you know, I think that that's, you know, the other, you, t- you mentioned Ryan Day keeping the book on on, uh, on Michigan. And that's the other thing I thought was interesting this year, Mike, is in that preseason at Big Ten Media Days, I mean, you you know what it's like to mm-hmm. every week, or every season, Michigan sort of tight lips about Ohio State. They don't talk about it, at least under Harbaugh. And Harbaugh gets sort of, you know, sets his jaw, doesn't talk about it very much, doesn't say, you know, you try to get him to gauge about the guarantee he made. And, yeah, you know, that was, you know, years ago. I'm not going to pull back the onion. And this year they're all like, oh, yeah, 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 we want to beat Ohio State. Yeah, we got signs up. Yeah, we've got a beat Ohio drill. And that's been refreshing. And that they've been, they've been open about how much this game means to them from way, way weeks ago. To now, and and I think that that will allow them to be looser, too. Ryan Day's got his book, but Michigan sort of opened its book a little bit this year on on at least how they're approaching this game, and I also think that's going to help keep them you know looser, um, understanding how big this this moment is, but also knowing that they've been preparing for it all season, and that's when you have big plays, big plays from big players stepping up on this 
enormous stage. It is enormous. And you know, when I was watching uh, one of the promos uh, for the game last night on TV, they were going through the years, uh, the players on both sides who did just that, made big plays, and they are legends forever. And that's what this game can do. That's the exciting part. It is. You got to Maybe there's a Bianca Batuka performance yeah. out there on Saturday for Michigan. You never know. There could be a Charles Woodson performance. I don't. I don't want to say there's anybody like Charles Woodson on this team, but you know, have that kind of performance. Uh, you know, there there is an opportunity out there, and and I just I I love that this game is is meaningful. Um, I'm sure Ohio State. I'm sure Ryan Day is going to beat it in their heads that last year Michigan canceled the game because of the COVID outbreak and they'll they'll use that they want to you know they want to beat them up for that reason too but Michigan has so many reasons to to want to be motivated for this win not just to break the the Ohio State win streak but to go to the Big Ten championship and and be part of something that the program has not been part of since 2004 and to take that next step into the college football playoff um, you know, it, it was on the line. You know, five years ago, the JT, the JT Barrett game. Right. You know, there was a lot on the line that game too, um, and it was close. So they just Michigan has to stop being just close. Obviously, they need to take it to that next level. And my goodness, this would be a shock the world moment, wouldn't it? It sort of reminds me in some ways of 1969 when you know the, mm-hmm. the week of that game. Of course, uh, there wasn't as much. Uh, coverage uh, of college football or anything really back then but it was pretty much the same attitude uh michigan is uh, they don't have a chance against this ohio state team which might be and i remember this well uh, might be the greatest college football team ever assembled and you know one of the things when i think about this game this week you know looking over the last 20 years angelique it's, it's been all ohio state they've dominated uh, this series and i thought you know, a lot of the kids that are playing for mm-hmm. Ohio State, they think of the series yeah. as this is the way it is. We just dominate these guys. They could be a little bit overconfident and not take Michigan seriously because I, they have seen in their lifetime no reason to. That is an excellent point. Uh, you know, it really, it really is. And, and you know, I've been covering this team long enough to remember when Michigan dominated the rivalry yeah. <laughs> when John Cooper was at Ohio State. And those were really, really good Ohio State teams, and, and Michigan would just put it together and and cause havoc and, and win that game, and then Ohio State would then go lose the bowl game, which has sort of been the pattern the last few years for Michigan, lose that game and lose the bowl game. And uh, But you're right, these, these players don't remember a day when, when Michigan was in the, uh, uh, in the W. You know, they just – it's it must be an amazing – feeling for the Ohio State players to go into this thinking, okay, this is just, yeah, we, we play this game every year. It's an important game, but we win it. And uh, and I do think that's that's when you've got guys on this on this Michigan team, like an Aiden Hutchinson, whose father played and had success against Ohio State. You've got Caden Colasar on this team, who's, whose dad played at Michigan and had obvious success. And you know about those. And I think that's an important thread in a program to keep some of those legacy players who understand what the past was like and they know it, they, they learned it from their fathers and they're carrying it on. And I, I think that those are, I, I think, you know, Aiden Hutchinson has been an important locker room force for this team, uh, not just for his performance on the field, but, but what he brings in, in terms of his raw emotion and, and also just the, these kinds of moments where, you know, this was, they want to, they want to return Michigan to some sort of glory in this rivalry and, and build this foundation, start from here and, and stop allowing Ohio state to collect their gold pants every year. And, and that's, that's a big motivation. And um, they are going to draw on those guys this week. Well, to after, help some of the younger players know about what this rivalry is about. But you know, after 11 games, Angelique, we can say Michigan is a much improved team. They're far better than I think you and I mm-hmm. thought they were going to be. And they're mentally tough, something I wasn't sure if we'd see that uh, this year uh, to this degree. I mean, they're ready for this game. I have no doubt about that. And I think some year Michigan is just going to have to find a way to beat these guys, regardless of how good they are. And you know what? Now's as good as uh, any time. You're at home. You're confident. It's been a long time since this game uh, has had so much on the line. 
And I think it's the way it should be, Angelique. You're right, Mike. And, you, you know, you bring up mental toughness, and that's an excellent point. I mean, you can talk X's and O's. You can talk about all the different the players, but it really has been. I thought that was an issue the last few years is the mental toughness, that fourth quarter drive. And, and you know, there there often would be that stayed. And, and I think the win at Penn State really was important on that level that here's a team that had some adversity at the end with the strip sack, and then they just came back and, and very poised. And, I, and again, I, I, I think there are a lot of people who don't really appreciate Cade McNamara, but he doesn't, you know, to use a hardball word, he doesn't flinch. He just got back in there and directed this drive, and, and they won the game. And, and I think that's been a difference, at least for me watching this team, is this team finishes. Um, you know, I, you know, we can talk about the Michigan State game, of course, but I think generally speaking, this has been um, – that was something I was going to look for is, is how does this team look in the fourth quarter? How do they look in the fourth quarter of the, the season, in a sense, and, and finishing teams? And and they have proven that. They they are finishers. And um, I, it's an intangible that, that, again, I keep saying important, using that word, but that is important at, at this stage in the season – and going against Ohio State. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that there is that no-quit element. And and I can't say that I could say that the previous season. Well, final question for you before we uh, let you get away, Angelique. I know it is a crazy busy week for you. <laughs> uh, Michigan, as we said, has to play the game, a great game on both sides of the ball, better than anything we've seen from them this year if they want to stay in this game. Does your gut tell you, from having seen them all year, that they have the personnel to beat this team, this Ohio State team, on Saturday? I've watched a lot of Ohio State this year. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm from Ohio, and and I I have always I always you know you and I both love this week, so I'm always keeping an eye on on Ohio State throughout the season. I do think that they have some weaknesses on defense. I do think if Michigan starts fast and and attacks and you know, and I, I'm, I really do think you got to go with Hassan Hassan. You have to go with what has worked, um, but you also have to be able to to be show some variety, which I thought that they showed last week. And I do think that there's a chance defensively. I, I think they can slow Ohio State. I, they're not going to stop them, obviously, but I think that they they do have that ability. And, and I I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be closer. I'm not sure what people think. Do they think it's going to be you know like that score last week? Uh, Ohio State against Michigan State. I don't think it's anything like that. I, I really don't. I, I just think that that Michigan's a more balanced team, and um, won't come, won't come out and, and stray from what has gotten them there, like Michigan State did last week um, in those in those opening drives against Ohio State. But yes, I do think Michigan matches up decently and and can make this a game. Well, it's just wonderful that here we are, uh, the last game of the year. This is uh, like so many other great Michigan-Ohio State weekends uh, in our lifetime or in the past that it's all on the line, much so, I think, for Michigan, more <laughs> important uh, for Jim and the team. So it's going to be a great environment. Hopefully we don't see a, a sea of red uh, in the stadium. <laughs> I think you might. Or, or scarlet, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think we might too. But at any rate, uh, with us today for the uh, 12th year in a row, I, I guess I should correct myself again, the 11th year in a row, because we didn't play Ohio State last year, uh, has been beat writer Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News. As always, it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have you with us for this game, Angelique. And I, I wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving and uh, enjoy Saturday. And you have a happy Thanksgiving, too, and, and your listeners as well. And um, it's going to be, what, 35 degrees? It's going to feel like a Michigan Ohio State game on Saturday. And you and I both love it. I think most uh, most people in the Big Ten and certainly in Michigan and Ohio love this game. So um, I can't wait. I can't wait. I love this week. I, You know, we both do. And I appreciate you always including me.
On Quick Hits today, at his presser Monday, Jim had no injury updates. The only update we've had recently was from Blake Corum himself. Uh, At his turkey giveaway on Sunday, he made it sound like he could play this Saturday. We shall see. Overall, we are in pretty good shape for Week 12 of the season. We were scheduled to have Ohio State Radio play-by-play voice Paul Keels with us on Thursday on the Visitor's Edition, but he also serves as the voice of OSU Hoops, so his schedule is completely out of whack this week. So joining us will be Dan Hope from the Ohio State site, 11 Warriors. We'll have that show up on Thursday morning, so before or after you demolish your Turkey Day feast, don't forget to tune us in. On the Visitor's Edition, I'll also have some interesting game day notes and my final thoughts before we play the biggest game in this rivalry since 2016. That will do it for now. Thanks again to the angel of the big house, Angelique Shingelis from the Detroit News, for joining us once again to preview the game. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. Make sure you join us again Thursday. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at Yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at Yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go blue.